New England Sports Media Podcast, Episode 10, the healthiest beat writer in the MLB, Steve Hewitt, joins <laughs> us. The great Steve Hewitt, one of our favorite people to see at random college basketball games up there with Joe <laughs> Sullivan. Uh, Steve, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing good, man. It's about as, about as good as you can be, what, three days now post-marathon. Post for um, sure. Oh, I'm glad to glad I could finally be on be on the show, man. Yeah, no, we're glad to have you. We were one of the guests that we've uh, been excited about having. All right, let's get right, let's get right to the marathon stuff because obviously it's something you're yeah. super passionate about, and I've loved yeah. the stuff that you've written about it. Like like you you're very transparent, like with what it means to you and that type of stuff. So, can you yeah. kind of take us through first of all this year's experience, but also your experience writing about about your experience? Yeah, man, um, this year has been absolutely wild. Obviously. So like the other day, I'm just like, I'm going through my like running, like I, I, I like log all my runs on, on this app called Strava and I'm like looking back and I, I started training for the Boston Marathon for 2020 back last November, like before Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it was just like wild to me. Like it's been 10 months since, since I started doing this thing. And obviously um, we, we never anticipated uh, anything happening like this this year with COVID and everything pushing everything back. Um, obviously, it was it was super disappointing back in back in March. Uh, it was sort of expected, like all the leagues had started shutting down because of COVID, and uh, it was sort of inevitable that like the boss, like something was going to happen with Boston. Like we're, we weren't going to have it like it like it normally was going to be. Um, so I mean, it was still disappointing, but not surprising. Uh, but we were still excited because like okay we're gonna we're gonna run in september uh it's gonna be like the most unique boston marathon ever hundreds of thousands of people will still be out there hopefully covid is going to be gone by then uh hopefully this like the six months like covid covid will be gone and we can go back to normal back in september and then obviously it just never (laughs) went back to normal um and they and they made it virtual uh i think it was like the last week of may May 28th or something like that. And that was, I was just obviously super bummed because um, I ran it in 2018 and, and that was like one of the coolest experiences of my life uh, to be even in that, the most ridiculous weather in, in the history of the marathon and the 40 mile an hour winds and driving rain and everything. But that was just like the coolest moment ever to, to run down Boylston uh, and kind of experience that moment that so many people have, have done. And, uh, and to know I wasn't going to have that moment was just like, I was obviously super devastated and emotional about it. And uh, I, I wrote this in, in one of the columns I wrote, it was like, I told my friends like right away, I was like, I'm not doing this like virtual, like they want me to run a marathon by myself. Like it's hard enough to do it with 30,000 other runners and thousands of spectators supporting you and kind of pushing you along the way. But uh, running is such a like a sort of a community kind of sport obviously it's individual but like the community really pushes you through that 26.2 miles and I'm like I'm not I'm not doing that like what's the what's the honor in, in, in doing that um, and then I sort of just kept thinking about like the reason why I was running like I'm running for the Martin Richard Foundation in honor of the boy that that died in the uh, Boston bombings back in 2013 um and that kind of put everything in perspective like uh like what why are you running like it it, it's not about you it's it's about something so much bigger than yourself and and i kind of kept that in the back of my mind uh or or really in the forefront of my mind um and kind of decided like hey i'll just i'm I'm just gonna do this um obviously summer training is gonna be brutal but um this is something that martin even even though he was obviously eight at the time he passed, like this is something, and it was reiterated through his family who who kind of created this foundation, like this is something that he would embrace. Like um, he would he would try to make the most out of a tough situation, and and just do it. And uh, luckily, uh, I'm really good friends with about six other people who through the 2018 marathon, who had become like incredible they're like my best friends now um and sort of the idea was like i'm we don't want to run this together we don't want to run this by ourselves we want to try to do something together uh and so we kind of came up with a plan um 
to do it together last, this past Sunday. So we, we did a, a huge loop around the Charles River. Uh, and it was, uh, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but uh, it, it was definitely better than obviously I expected it to be a virtual marathon. Like, what is that? Like so many people ask me like, what's a virtual marathon? Like, what do you do? It's like, you just like, do you run on a treadmill? Like everyone was like, do you run on a treadmill? I'm like, no, uh, that's brutal. Like I can, I can barely do like five miles on a treadmill, but um, it was, it was more special than I thought it would be like the support uh, even from like random strangers as we, as we ran around, like obviously we had our Ember 8 uh, yellow jerseys and, the 2020 marathon bib so people knew we were running um and uh the support out there i had a lot of friends out there my friends had a lot of friends out there and uh it was a it was a pretty special day um and and better than i thought it would be for sure um, how you guys how'd you guys celebrate it what do you do after a marathon I, you just lay down for a while <laughs> um so we, we started and finished in Herder Park, uh, which I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with. It's like right on the Charles River and uh, right off of Soldiers Field Road uh, in Boston. And, um, and so we all kind of parked there. There's like a huge parking lot and we, um, we celebrated there. Actually, one of our, one of our friends who was sort of, sort of the ringleader of, um, of kind of putting everything together with like the aid stations and like just, just being our being our guy, a, pro, a kind of point man about it, uh, brought uh, was it seven bottles of champagne, and so when when everyone was done, um, we went to like a, a vacated spot of the grass where, where no one else was, and uh, we just had like a little champagne shower. We like popped the corks yeah, and everything. <laughs> uh, there's a video somewhere of of, of that uh, that I, I need to find. I need to get some from somebody. Um, and then we just, I mean, we just kind of sat there for a little, for a little while and uh, it kind of went our separate ways from there. But uh, it was it was pretty special to uh, to to um to do it with those those people who who were, who were like my best friends. Like we talk every day, and uh, we obviously met through the 2018 marathon and become like incredible friends. So it was really cool to do that with them. What did you What did you? Uh... When, when you were running that marathon, like, you know, that day, were there other groups doing similar things? I mean, I, obviously there were, but like, did you see any? Yeah. Um, so it's funny, like the day before on Saturday, um, I'm, I'm a part of another running groups called the Brighton Bangers um, for, for like a year or so now. I, I've gotten to know those, those guys and girls a, a little bit. And uh, there were four people from that group who were running on Saturday. So I, I decided I'd, I'd go out and kind of and, and support and uh, there was a station set up along the river. So I, I went and kind of hung out with some people and I was surprised to see, um, I guess I, I should have known, but there were other people obviously running the marathon. Like this was the big week, big weekend. I think that uh, runners wanted to do it because uh, the original marathon postponement date was Monday. Um, so this was kind of the big weekend to do it, to do the virtual. And we saw so many runners for their 2020 bibs um, just going by us. And, uh, and, and we were like cheering and I had the cowbell going. <laughs> and uh, there was this like one guy who, who kept, pa he was doing like 10 loops around the river and just kept passing us and passing us. And, and when we kept cheering him on, um, so that kind of gave me an idea for Sunday, like, oh, there's probably going to be more people out there with different groups like us doing it. And, uh, and we absolutely did see like other runners, like kind of passing us, like, maybe even going in the opposite direction. Um, and we would like, cause I was with a group of like two or three other people going at my pace. So we, we would pass runners every, every, even it felt like every mile at least and we just like kind of give them a, a support or even like have a brief conversation with them as, as we pass them um so and it was perfect weather too on sunday so like there were a lot of runners out there and uh even runners who weren't running the marathon were just out for their regular runs were, were cheering us on um and and that was really cool um it was funny one of our one of our friends like he must have I, I don't know. He just kind of came out of nowhere and he's like one of our running, uh, another one of my running friends who he wasn't running the marathon. 
uh, but he knew we were going to be out there. So it was like mile 13, uh, we were approaching the Museum of Science and he comes out of nowhere. He's whole, he, and he's like a really good marathoner. Like he, he runs really fast. Um, but he's wearing jeans and he's holding a cup of coffee and he comes out of nowhere. It's like a group of four of us running. Um, and he, he just joins us. I don't know where he came from. <laughs> and he, he's kind of crazy to begin with, but he, he's running with us wearing jeans and holding a cup of coffee. So I'm like, Ke his name's Kevin. I wrote about this in, in my column the other day. I'm like, what, what are you doing, man? <laughs> um, and that was like the funniest moment because like, he, just, he ran with us for literally a mile and like was keeping up at our pace. Like we were going like 8.15 a mile or something like that at that point. And, and then he just kind of, he found like, he found, he found like another group of his friends somewhere along our course and he just kind of, and left from there. And I'm like, dude, no, Kevin. <laughs> like you're, you're a runner right there. Like, like, yeah, you're like, you're like the epitome of like, uh, of a runner. And uh, it kind of went to show sort of in a small that kind of example like like that's kind of the spirit of Boston like kind of showing through like you know what I mean like uh like like just wanting to be a part of it and showing that sort of community aspect of, of the marathon which uh obviously just not hundreds of thousands of people out there but uh we definitely felt that sort of that spirit and that energy in a, in a smaller in a smaller way um no for sure for sure so um i'm curious like this is kind of like the weird like question in me but when you're training for this marathon and you're also like a full-time red Sox beat reporter probably like a lot of late nights type of thing like how like what's your schedule like and with the training like when are, are you training runs like at all different types of the day are they like always at a certain time like what was it like always it's never, it's like never at the same time, honestly. I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get like super creative, especially with the Red Sox, like, cause they're, they're not even like, they'll play like a seven o'clock game and then they'll play like a one o'clock game the next day. And it's like, I gotta like work my whole schedule around when the Red Sox are playing. Um, so for my training, I, I ran probably, or tried to run like five times a week. Um, and every weekend you, you, you need to be doing like a long run, like a, a double digit. Uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with like tra marathon training. Um, yeah. My mom's sort of run a few. So I've seen the schedule. It's insane. Yeah. So, you, so uh, and obviously the rest of Steve, we gotta interrupt you. We can't hear you as well right now. I think we lost. Uh, um, yeah, I might. Where be. your phone was put? Yeah, you good now? We're good uh, now. All right, we'll just yeah. we'll just cut Let's that part go. out. Liam, ask that question again. My bad. <laughs> Liam, ask your question again, or make your comment, or whatever. You, you ask said. the question. Uh, <laughs> My bad. Uh, I just ruined the whole thing. No, nah, you're right. good. Let we'll, no, we'll it out. Talk about your schedule. All right, I'll, all right, I'll just I'll just re-ask the question. So. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. So, Steve, obviously, you're a Red Sox beat reporter. There's a lot of time that goes into that. Like, can you describe how you balanced your marathon training with that? Like, when did you do it? How did you fit it in? And, like, how many hours is it a week? Yeah. Yeah, it – I can give you – in terms of just straight running, it's like it's like five hours of running. I would say when I look at my like weekly logs and everything, it's like four to five hours total. Um, Cause I'm doing like 40 mile, 50 mile weeks at some points. Um, and with, in regards to the Red Sox schedule, like you have to get like, it's tough. Like you have to get creative, um, especially with the long runs. Um, like obviously the Red Sox started in what, like July 24th, 25th. And to get ready for a marathon on September 13th. Like that's 
when the mileage kind of picks up. So you're doing like your 16, your 18, your 20 mile runs um, every Saturday. Cause that's when I I'd normally do my long runs is every Saturday morning. Um, and it, it got, it got, it got pretty tough to be honest with you, because like the Red Sox did not make it easy as you guys know with how long they take to play baseball games. Um, especially when they, when they're making these starts at like seven thirty home games, uh, which is a, a whole different story. <laughs> I want to open that can of worms right now. Um, and the games aren't ending till 11 at the bat at best, you know, like the three and a half, like it's usually like three and a half hour games. And then, uh, as you guys know, you gotta, you gotta spend time interviewing and, and doing the press conferences and then writing and, and finishing up. So, uh, I, they were like, I'm not done one in the morning and, um, and with the summer and you're training in the summer, like if it was like the fall, like I could, I could run like any time of the day, if it was like the fall and it was like good weather and it was like 50 degrees all day or something. But in the summer, like you want to get out early because like the temperature can get up to like 80 degrees by like what not like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. And to get a 16, 18 mile run in, you want to start by like 6, 630 in the morning uh, and, and finish, finish up by before it gets like really hot. So there were nights when I was at Fenway finish up my work by like 1 one thirty, and then I got to be up in five hours to run 16 18 miles which is like just ridiculous <laughs> to think about and to, I've never even like talked about it like this but like just to, just to say it is is just absurd um so that 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 made it difficult um usually in the middle of the week it's easier because you're running shorter mileage and uh if there's no, if, if I'm not working that day, like I'll, I'll go out at like six or seven at night and, and, and go out. Cause I, I like, I like going at night. I'm just, I'm not, I'm a, I'm different in that, in that aspect. Most, most runners run like to run in the morning, um, maybe cause they have normal schedules like I do and they need to get to work by like eight or 9 AM or, or, or whatever. Uh, I like to get my runs in like at night, uh, but the midweek it's pretty easy because you're running like six, seven miles. And I say that so like, casually because i know i know people are probably listening to me like six seven what? miles that's easy to, that's like a normal run for you like um but uh it's it's so saturday it was those like saturday morning long runs when you're like trying to avoid the heat and working around the red sox schedule that definitely made it difficult um but you know i got i got those runs in man uh you, you just kind of find a way <laughs> Greg, I can't hear you. Man, we're making all kinds of mistakes. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. No, it's all right. We can we can cut it all out. Wait. Anyway, did you, did you guys get my that whole thing? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, yeah, you're good. I just you're couldn't good. hear you. I saw you talking. I was like, no, nah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Greg messing up now. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> it's the host. Yeah. But so, Steve, obviously when Liam and I met you, like when we were in college last year and the couple of years before that, you were doing kind of like a little bit of everything. Um, coverage yep. wise for the Herald. Uh, now you're on the Red Sox beat. Um, how is that kind of like, how is it gone? Especially with it being all like Zoom for the most part. Like what has that transition been like? And uh, just kind of take us through the past like year of your job, year or two of your job. Yeah, man. The last, I can't believe it's, I think it's like almost been a year like now. I'd have to look at the exact date, but I got like officially promoted. It was like mid-September last year. Um so I'd have to look at the date. It might be like a year, a year ago, like today or something. Um, and it's been, it's been wild. Like I obviously, like you said, for the first five years I was at the Herald, um, I was kind of just doing general assignment or doing these late nights in the office, uh, working like graveyard shifts to just like put in box scores in the paper and everything. And um, sort of like one thing kind of led to another and, Obviously, Mike Solderman, who's who's with the Globe now, he was our Red Sox reporter for a long time, one of our Red Sox reporters for a long time, and and he left to take a job at the Globe. And at that point, like I had, um, 
like I I had helped out a lot with the Red Sox. Just I, I like I covered the 2018 playoffs. I was at the ALCS and World Series. Um, I was kind of the 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 extra guy if if the Herald ever needed a guy to kind of go with Fenway and 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 cover a game or, or whatever. Um, and then uh, I was lucky enough, uh, Justin Pelletier, who, who you guys know, who's our former sports editor at the time last last September, uh, trusted me enough to kind of hand me the reins and joined uh, joined Jason Mastrovanato, who's been the best teammate you could ask for. Um, and so I, I kind of took over for those last couple of weeks. And then um, I feel like, at that point, like everything <laughs> with the Red Sox sort of hit the fan, uh, happened, you know, over the, that's happened over the last year, like happened, like between core, the core getting fired or dismissed or however, however, however you want to frame that. And then Mookie getting traded and sale getting Tommy John and then, uh, COVID-19 <laughs> uh, delays the season for four months. Um, and so it's, it's been wild. Like I, I kind of, obviously I came to spring training back in February thinking like, obviously everything was normal back then. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this 162 game season. I'm going to travel a ton. It's going to be great. Like my first year in the beat, like I'm so excited. And then everything just sort of like in the snap of a finger, like I was supposed to go. So I remember like March 12th, um, Rudy, Rudy Gobert test, test positive. Um, or it was on March 11th, one of those days. The next day after that was when I was supposed to go back to spring training. So that was like a hectic night because like all the leagues were shutting down like right when that happened. And we were wondering like what's going on, what's going to happen with baseball. Um, and obviously that next after, the next day that afternoon, they, um, they whatever, they postponed spring training or, or suspended it. I think that was what what it was and we had made the decision like a couple hours after Rudy Gobert tested positive like oh we don't, we don't think it's like I don't I don't think it's safe to go down there um and so we I like canceled my trip I canceled my my flight and and uh, my rental car and and everything and I obviously I never went back to spring training because everything got canceled and postponed um but that kind of set off like from March 12th to till like July, like early July when summer camp started, like I'm just sitting in my, <laughs> sitting at home every day and, and and doing what I can from, from my apartment. Uh, the, the Red Sox would do Zoom press conferences like every once in a while uh, just to give us something to write about. But like for four months, there was like nothing. We're just waiting for a season to start and waiting for more details from MLB about how the season's going to play out. Um, so that was that was uncertain. And then obviously that the Herald uh, unfortunately had, had furloughs. So I was like for f about two months, every other week, I, w I just wasn't working. Um, so it was a weird time um, from March to July. And thankfully uh, we've, we've had some semblance of normal. Um, we're able to go to Fenway for the games um, for home games, at least like, I'm not, I'm not going to travel. It's just not worth it. It's not safe. Um, and because it's just no benefit, honestly, uh, with, with the zoom, like everything's on zoom. Uh, there's no real benefit to going to the park. I, I like to joke, like, I'm just, I'm just going to the park for me to, to just get out of the house because for four months, I'm just, I'm just stuck in my, in my apartment, uh, looking out the window at the real world. <laughs> and like, I just want to get out and, and do something and like have some sort of schedule to my life. Um, so it's been it's been an adjustment. Um, never obviously this has been my first year in the beat, uh, wearing a mask in the press box uh, while, I'm, while I'm watching a baseball game, like socially distanced from other reporters, um, and and doing press conferences over Zoom. <laughs> and like it's been wild, man. Uh, but I try to keep everything in perspective. Like uh, it could be a lot worse. You know what I mean? We we could have we could have no sports right now or 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 whatever um so I'm, I'm lucky to have a job i'm lucky to have my health and uh hopefully this thing can go away soon so we can 
so I can get like a real first season on the beat where I'm traveling and, and everything because that's what I was looking forward to to doing the most you know so. what's the entire media experience like right now like are they serving you food or people talking in the press box what's it like yeah yes uh they at Fenway at least I don't I can't speak for all the other parts but they, they give us sort of like a box lunch or dinner uh which is I mean it's not anything special it's like cold cuts and uh once in a while they'll to give us like some sort of meat like chicken or something uh but it, whoa, I mean, it's so, I <laughs> like whoa we're like wow we're, meat. Good, we're, we're wow. living large here um protein <laughs> yeah. um so they they give us they give us food at every game um which is which is a nice gesture um there there's some semblance of like a normal press box setting as, as you guys are, are accustomed to um we have to wear a mask at all times. Like we can't take it off unless we're eating for obvious reasons. We can't eat through a mask. Um, like I, I sit next, I, I usually sit next to Ian Brown from MLB.com and we're like, we're six feet away, but we're still, we're still talking like, like it would be a normal game. Like it would be a normal season. And there's like the normal back and forth in the press box and, and debates or, or what have you. Um, so that, that's, that's been nice that, um, COVID hasn't totally like ruined the experience but um but yeah how, how have you found like are there certain players or coaches who are like better at the zoom press conference than others oh that's a, that's a good question um yeah it was, it was funny like last week like I don't I don't even know there's always like these technical difficulties going going on and like Renicky can't hear us or, or or whatever like it was definitely like hard at the beginning uh, just because it was so new um I'm trying to think of a specific player who's like really good at them um Verdugo's been like a really good interview um he kind of just kind of says whatever's on his mind um Renicky Renicky's gotten better even though he kind of he kind of rambles a little bit <laughs> um no one's like been like really bad at it. I think it's like pretty. I don't know what it's like from their vantage point. Like I don't know if they see us, like on their side. Um, mm-hmm. But there hasn't been like too much like mass confusion. And like, I think they they just hear us through a, a screen or a monitor. I don't I don't know exactly how it works on their end. Um, but it, it's mostly gone pretty smooth. So. So um, is there any like opportunity for reporters to get one on ones or like talk to like? like other coaches who aren't the manager or like anything like that to kind of get some unique stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just really, it's a lot harder. Um, cause normally obviously you'd have, you'd have the clubhouse, the pre pre pregame clubhouse where it's like 45 minutes and you can like wait on a player or like go up to their, go up to a locker and it's easy. Uh, but you don't have that sort of benefit anymore. Uh, so you have to, you have to like know ahead of time and who you want to talk to and try to request it through the PR. And usually there's only one PR guy on the road um, or even at home, even at home, like it's hard, it's just hard to, to kind of coordinate that because they, they have their own responsibilities and everything going on on their end on the PR, on the PR front. So they don't have a ton of time to, to, uh, to try to coordinate those interviews. Um, and the, and the players are just like, all over the place like they, they like it's hard to track them down like they have the their lockers are in the luxury suites um like no one's in the clubhouse at least at home um so it's harder to coordinate like i've i've tried to do a few and some of them have fallen through one actually finally worked after like w- after like a week of i felt like i had to keep pestering like hey can i can i get him today can i like w- what's the status on that on that when in a normal year um like you can try to set something up like the PR guy can give a player a heads up like hey so so wants to talk to you if you can be at your locker for like 10 15 minutes or or whatever um but it's been harder i mean the opportunity is still there it's just it's just a lot more complicated than the normal which um which i think is a little bit of a disservice to to what we're trying to do like we're trying to provide unique stories um but i mean it's a unique year so uh I try, I try maybe more than other reporters to give everything a little more grace 
just because everything's so new and it's challenging and I get it. Um, but it's definitely been a lot harder than normal. So have have you noticed other people in the press box and other Red Sox beat writers being like, like, screw this. Like we just want it to be like it was or. No, not really. Everyone's kind of taking it in stride. I think. Um, I can't, I can't, no, not really. Yeah. Everything's, I mean, we're all like sort of frustrated that it's happening, but, um, like I said, I, I try to just take it in stride and, 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 and just take whatever I can get. Um, usually our stories are going to be based around whatever press conferences or the PR sets up. I don't know if there's someone else requesting a certain player. It's like they usually try to give us a player like before every game, um, which actually wasn't the case before. Um, Cause I don't know if you've covered Red Sox games, but it's a lot of just sit, standing around in the clubhouse for 45 minutes during the pre, that pregame access, just because the players are out taking BP or getting treatment or whatever. And there's just no one in there. Um, so maybe in a way this is like kind of forced the PR staff. to like um, to find somebody to, to kind of help us out. Like they're trying to be as cooperative as they can, I think. Um, and it's been helpful to have that like one player before every game. And then we're kind of just at the mercy of what happens during the game. Like we're, we'll get like one or two players after the game. Um, so I, I, that's kind of been the new normal, um, but hopefully it's not the, hopefully it's not the permanent normal because, um, that it takes away from our experience. Like we're trying to tell the full story or something we want, we want to be able to find that unique story or unique angle to, to kind of, to tell it. So, uh, that's been, it's been challenging, but, um, we're doing our best. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt. Well, Steve, we thank you for your time. The best in shape beat writer in baseball. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's wrong. Yeah, I don't no. think so either. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know anyone else who's who runs marathons who covers baseball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they always, you know, say yeah. that whole like stupid cliche: it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I guess you embody that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess and baseball then, is the right one for you. So, Steve, thanks for your time. Uh, that was that was fun. We enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for. Uh, Thanks for having me on. I'm glad I was finally able to find yeah, some time and no crazy doubt. schedule to, to join you guys. So I appreciate yeah. you guys. And let me, let me know. I'd love to come on again. Let, Absolutely. Let Absolutely. Again. The great Steve Hewitt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys.